we had a, a very lengthy study done by Mississippi State University up here called the Predator Prey Project, which examined depredation impacts of all types upon white-tailed deer, bear, coyote, wolf, cougar, bobcat, the gamut. Um, and the coyote was declared number one by the study, and wolves kind of came in about number three behind black bears. And a lot of people, they hear that, they're like, well, what do you mean? Bears aren't chasing down adult bucks and killing them? Well, no, but they're a fawn vacuum. Bears will consume a tremendous amount of fawns. Uh, the wolf expansion, yeah, it's taken a long time. So if you go through the wolf timeline, if you will, by 1960, wolves were pretty much wiped out from the Upper Peninsula. And it wasn't until 1991 when they found the first breeding pair in years again in the UP. So from 1991 to present, uh, DNR estimate is on the low end, 762 wolves today. Do you think that's accurate? I would say if, if you're couching it, on the low end, as a minimum possible number, I would say they're in there. Uh, do I think there's more than that? Well, yes. But again, that's it's being pronounced as a minimum population threshold. Now, even like being an avid deer hunter, do you see them every time that you're in the woods? When, or do you at least hear them whenever you're out deer hunting? No, not even close. Okay. Um, I, I live here at the foot of the Western Michigami Highlands, the Huron Mountains. Um, I spend thousands of hours a year in and out of season in the woods doing all kinds of things, not just hunting. And, you know, all the years that I've spent nearly three decades hunting the backcountry of the UP, I can count on one hand the number of times that I have seen a wolf while I was in the act of hunting. Um, I've seen them out driving around the highways and doing other things, but, you know, there's kind of a mischaracterization out there that in the UP, there's a wolf behind every tree. Yeah. And that hasn't been my experience. Yeah. I mean, only time I've ever heard about, we have a lot of guys down here that, that bear hunt up there. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll talk about their, they've had dogs killed by, by wolves or they have had to go in and get their dogs and they had wolves all around them. Um, is it possible, is there certain areas that are thicker as far as the, the population of wolves than others? Uh, absolutely. I, I think it's like any other game species, you know, it's, there's pockets. Mm -hmm. um, one of the misnomers out there is, is you'll hear, well, I've got nothing but wolves and there's, there's no deer. So if you compare fishing, right, if you're a big lake fisherman and you're going after, we'll say salmon, you're looking for two things. You're looking for a thermocline and you're looking for a bait ball. Why? Because where there's prey, there's predators. Mm -hmm. So if you're drowning in wolves, air quotes, it's because they're eating something, and it's probably not red squirrels. Um, yes, there are areas of higher wolf density. There are areas of lower wolf density. But you got to keep in mind, these critters, they have a 100-square-mile home range. So they're going to move around quite a bit. Jeez. And that, that's, not, that's not breeding season. That's just regular movement? Yes, correct. Holy cow. I didn't realize it was that that big of a, you know, and coyotes typically stay around the, like their small area. I didn't realize wolves move that big. Yes. They're extremely nomadic. Now, do they, do they migrate? You know, like the deer obviously in the UP migrate in the wintertime. Will they follow those deer down? Oh, absolutely. Well, it's just like the salmon reference I just made where the prey goes, the predators follow. Yeah. And, yeah. um, you know, that's that's part of the problem here, Steve, and, and I'm not trying to detract from the fact that wolves certainly eat deer, but we have a real habitat crisis up here in the UP that hasn't gotten a lot of attention. You know, not very far back in the history books, we had over 120-some uniquely identified, we call them DWCs, deer winter complexes or deer yards. Mm -hmm. So today, only 36 of those remain. And uh, of how the many 30, did you say? Over 120. Holy cow. And of the 36 that remain, only six of them are meeting DNR-specified sufficient metrics for food and shelter. So what that means is 30 out of 36 deer yards that we have left are failing. So in the context of the whole landmass of the UP, you're asking 100% of the deer population to cram into effectively 15% of the habitat. There's a very real problem there. 
Yeah. Ultimately, you know, we can talk regulations, we can talk predators, we can talk all kinds of things that impact deer abundance, but winter in the UP trumps all. And if they can't survive the winter, nothing else matters. And the thing that you got to take into account with that too, with ever shrinking winter complex habitat, it significantly amplifies depredation success for wolves. Call it shooting fish in a barrel. After all these issues that we have, why isn't the state managing the population better? After, you know, we've been dealing with this now. What When did the season close on wolves? Uh, it opened in 2013 and it was closed by 2014. Okay, so then we've been 11 years since then. How come nothing else has happened since then? And it's become a giant political circus at the federal level. Uh, California courts filing injunctions and all sorts of things, um, which is a, a convoluted mess that would take me an hour to walk you through. But suffice it to say, it's become a federal issue, and and it's tied up in all kinds of legalese. Ban bear baiting on public land, on federal public land. You know, you got people that have never even been in the woods, people that probably have no idea what the UP's like or the, the problems or stuff that's going on, and they're making decisions for you guys. I believe that states uh, have the right to govern their own resources within reason. And, you know, it's it's... It's an open and shut case here, Steve. The wolves have met every recovery metric federally or otherwise. Um, they're not endangered. There, there's not a problem here other than we do have an unchecked apex predator population. But to flip that argument on its head, Steve, the other side is the data that we're seeing now over the last several years is that the wolf numbers are stabilizing. They have plateaued. So to a biologist, what that means in layman's terms is the wolves have hit carrying capacity. They have food. You think any other animal, they're, and if they're not being killed, you think they're just going to keep going, 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 going. So why would they just randomly stop increasing? Or rising? Well, it's, it's no different than deer abundance. Deer can only reach a certain threshold, which is your carrying capacity. The land will only feed and house so many animals. And in the context of wolves, it's not only enough food or enough land mass, wolf packs are very territorial. And if there's another opposing pack that encroaches on that territory, they will come right after them and they will attempt to kill them. So once pack boundaries are established, those are very hard lines that remain. And encroachment just simply isn't tolerated. So once you have established packs that have covered the whole land mass of the UP, where else do you go? Yeah.